The Salt Lake River starts on the western side of the Olympic Mountains in the state of Washington. This river flows westward through the Olympic National Park and Olympic National Forest. It flows directly through our ranch on the south bank and continues 40 miles flowing into the Quileute River. One mile later, it flows into the Pacific Ocean at La Push, Washington, home of the Native American Quileute Nation. The Salduck River is one of 19 rivers nominated as a wild and scenic river in the Wild Olympics Wilderness Bill in front of Congress. Part one of this video was recorded at Barking Dog Hole, also known as Swede Hole, Big Hole, and in the 1890s U.S. Geological Survey, it's marked as Hopkins Landing. Part two and three were recorded inside Eagle Creek Springs, a tributary of the Salduck River that flows in at Barking Dog Hole. The camera being used is a VS625 SD from Markham Technologies, made in the USA, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Funding for the underwater camera came from the use of Cabela's Club Points and personal funds. No outside funding was received or asked for, and no taxpayer dollars were used. This is a totally independent funded video on wild salmon runs of the Salduck River. This video is a communication tool intended to educate the salmon management team responsible for providing this river with a healthy and self-sustaining salmon population. In order for these wild salmon runs to survive, this management team has to make good decisions. The team consists of the Washington State Department of Fish and Wildlife, the Quileute Native American Tribe, and the federal agency responsible for oversight, the National Marine Fisheries Service, a division of NOAA. These are the only people that can ensure that enough wild salmon will return to spawn. Who are we? The Conkey Smiths. Our family has lived 41 miles up the Salduck River since 1937. That's 75 years of watching this river and its declining salmon runs. That time spent makes us subject matter experts on the health of this river. The Salduck River is home to a fall and summer run of wild Chinook salmon. The fall run enters the river in September or October when the rains return to the Salduck River Valley. What you are looking at in this video is the summer run of wild Chinook salmon. This run enters the Salduck River in March or April, arriving at the Barking Dog Hole in July. In July, the river water level falls to the summer flow rate after the snow melts, and the dry season is started. Salmon from miles around will spend the summer at Barking Dog Hole. This hole is a survival pool. The depth of this hole is caused by the river taking a sharp bend and the fact that the Eagle Creek Springs flows into the Salduck at this point combined to make this hole a critical survival area for salmon. For three and a half months, these salmon stay in this hole. For the Chinook salmon, that's equal to 4% of their lifespan. In that time, these Chinook salmon complete the change from ocean to spawning salmon. This process is called ripening. If the rainy season returns in September, Chinook salmon will move upriver in the higher water and return to where they were born to spawn but the rains did not return to the Salduck until late October in 2012, so they spawned in our hole. The Chinook salmon run at Barking Dog Hole for 2012 was two wild females, two wild males, and two hatchery males. That's a 90% drop in returning adult salmon. In order to understand how big a 90% drop in the run of wild Chinook salmon is from last year's to this year's run, we would like to send you back in time to September of 2011 back to the Barking Dog Hole to see what a healthy salmon run looks like. In 2011, there were 50 wild Chinook salmon, 5 hatchery salmon, and an estimated 100 wild summer coho. The reason we bring up the hatchery salmon is because Barking Dog Hole is 9 miles above the Salduck Salmon Hatchery, and there is a requirement mandated by the Congressional Study on West Coast Hatcheries. This requirement is to prevent hatchery salmon from straying up into wild salmon spawning areas and to prevent them from spawning with wild salmon. That requirement was put on place in this river in 2004. In 2011 though, five hatchery salmon was not a big enough worry because there were 30 wild male salmon that kept them away from the females. In 2012, however, there were not enough wild males to protect them. Two wild males, two wild females, and two hatchery males made up the complete run of Chinook salmon at Barking Dog Hole. 
The first thing to learn from this clip is that the female has spawned. Only the female digs the red, or nest, using her tail. The easiest way to identify the females in a spawning area is to count white tails. The second thing you need to learn is that this male is a hatchery salmon. His adipose fin has been removed. Judging by the behavior of these two salmon, it appears likely that the wild Chinook salmon run is now 50% hatchery DNA. That would cause great concern if this were a normal year, but it's not. And if those two hatchery salmon did not volunteer to swim nine miles past the hatchery, the salmon run would probably be over. According to the textbook, sockeye salmon need a lake close by where they can spawn. That lake would provide a rearing area for the small sockeye fry. They can spend two years in the lake before they move out to sea. The closest lake, however, to Barking Dog Hole is Lake Pleasant, at least 12 miles down the river. There's a run of sockeye salmon in that lake. That run spawns in November and December. This run of summer wild river sockeye salmon, also known as blueback salmon, enters the river between March and April and swam 12 miles past Lake Creek and on August 19, 2012, they did something that hasn't happened in 60 years. They spawned in the Eagle Creek Springs. Eagle Creek Springs Salmon Habitat Project, tributary of the Salduck River. This creek is fed by an underground stream flowing out of the side of a hill in at least 19 different places. Eagle Creek Springs maintains a temperature of 48 degrees Fahrenheit year-round with a rate of flow of 11 cubic feet per second. That's 4,900 gallons of water every minute. My family owns 80% of this creek. The last 20%, including the hillside, belongs to the people of the United States of America and is inside the Olympic National Forest boundary. In 1998, my family contacted the Pacific Coast Salmon Coalition in Forks, Washington. This is a nonprofit group of volunteers dedicated to repairing the damage done to the rivers on the western slopes of the Olympic Mountains. This group's greatest asset is they are our neighbors. Made up mostly of retired school teachers and local people, we would never have approached the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife on our own. We don't trust the government out here, state or federal. That same Department of Fish and Wildlife told us just a few years earlier that the Salduck River is the best in the state and didn't need help. That's the kind of thinking that got this river in trouble in the first place. So the Pacific Coast Salmon Coalition put us in contact with a special group of fish biologists and engineers inside the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. This Salmon Habitat Enhancement Group helped fix things. They've gone now in budget cuts of 2008, but in 1999, they came in and transformed this creek. A blocking culvert was removed and replaced with a salmon-friendly culvert with a built-in fish ladder. The idea was to turn the creek into a wintering over pond. We get 125 inches of rain every year, and during the high water of the winter months, this river flows out of control. That makes Eagle Creek Springs a safety zone, an area for the small fry and adult fish to move into. The culvert, because it had a built-in fish ladder, was placed at the steepest angle ever attempted by the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. The depth of the creek increased by 6 feet at the mouth of the culvert and 2 feet higher in the spawning areas. The creek also expanded outward, filling in an area we used to graze our cows. That area now belongs to the salmon. We were not paid for that loss, nor do we ask to be. One of the secondary goals of this project was to get the sockeye salmon to move their spawning site. We have always had sockeye salmon. These are river sockeye, what the textbooks call an unusual event. Also known as blueback salmon, these salmon don't seem to require a lake to rear their young fry, as do most other sockeye salmon. Next to nothing is known about these fish because they are few and hard to find. There has always been a small group that have spawned at the mouth of this creek. They spawned in the river because they could not get into the Eagle Creek Springs. By removing the blocking culvert, salmon passage was open to all fish. On August 19, 2012, 11, each wild river sockeye salmon moved into Eagle Creek Springs to spawn, and that hasn't happened in 60 years. We would call that a significantly unusual event. Five females and six males moved 500 feet from one body of water into another so they could improve their chance for survival. They more than likely moved into the best salmon habitat in the state of Washington. We took the camera out of the river and followed the sockeye salmon on August 19th, who stayed in the creek for about four weeks. One of the most interesting effects of these sockeye salmon moving into spawn is their interaction with the coho fry that were born there last winter. After the female had completed her spawning, she began to use her tail to sweep the area around her red. The 
coho fry quickly learned that this was a feeding opportunity and would ball up behind her in big feeding frenzies. That would be remarkable if it happened once or twice, but it happened on average five times every hour for five days in a row until she ran out of energy or was done sweeping. Eagle Creek Springs, December 31st, 2011. New Year's Eve. Not quite 2012, but as close as we can get because the wild coho salmon did not return to their place of birth this year. In the year 2011, the summer run of coho salmon had 24 adults. In 2012, two. One female, one male. Out of the thousands of fertilized salmon eggs from 2009, two salmon returned. The fall run of wild coho salmon, once the most abundant run on this creek, is also down by 90%. If this trend continues, then you are likely watching the last of the wild coho salmon runs in the Salduck River. So enjoy this video and keep it safe so you can show your grandchildren what a wild salmon run used to look like. Eagle Creek Springs is a small but important tributary of the Salduck River. The loss of these salmon runs is being seen throughout this river system this year and will greatly impact the future of salmon in this river. It's not a habitat problem. This river has no dams to block salmon passage, so what's the problem? The female coho salmon in front of you was one of 24 females in the fall run. This female stayed active in this spot for four days, laying eggs each of those days. It was a different male every time, with several weaker males waiting behind for a chance to mate. Each female salmon lays 2,000 to 4,000 eggs, depending on her size and how well she eats when out at sea. Well, the college boys at NOAA tell us specific ocean conditions are bad and getting worse. They've been telling us that for years, and nobody's paying any attention. These poor Pacific Ocean conditions are starting a ripple effect in the food chain of these salmon. The salmon runs that come back are weaker and smaller in physical size than salmon coming back here just 20 years ago. That is just the first problem to face as she fights to return to the Salduck River. You see, these salmon are in the truest sense a swimming food stick, and everybody and everything wants one for their own. And when these salmon are in the Pacific Ocean, swimming for their life in increasingly poorer conditions, being targeted as a food source every day, well, very few of those 2,000 to 4,000 eggs ever return as adults to spawn. A contributing factor in 2012 was climate change. Yes, another science theory that some people don't believe in. Let me put it to you on a very local level. The dry season in the Salduck River Valley begins the second week in July and ends in mid-September. By mid-September, this river has received one or two large-sized rainstorms, and it's those rainstorms that move salmon upstream. 2012 did not bring rain to the Salduck River Valley until the end of October. The extra time spent at the mouth of the Quileute River waiting for the water to rise was hard on these runs of salmon. Why are these salmon important? The Washington State Department of Fish and Wildlife released a report in 2001, Pacific Salmon and Wildlife, by Johnson and O'Neill. This report details the impact of Pacific Ocean salmon on 138 different wildlife species. From orca whales to bald eagles, even the small American dipper bird rely on these salmon to be there. After salmon enter the river and spawn, they die. They then become the food source for 83 of those wildlife species, one reptile, 50 birds, and 32 mammals. So when you lose a salmon run on the Salduck River, you lose the life force that feeds the wildlife and forest of the Salduck River Valley. We are watching the beginning of the end of salmon on this river. No one group can fix this. It requires the cooperation of all three team members and enforcement of a plan. Through a series of U.S. federal court rulings, the management of salmon on rivers in the state of Washington is supposed to be co-managed. That implies that there is a team at work, a team of managers that understands the need to provide enough adult salmon returning to spawn to keep these runs alive. The salmon management team on the Salduck River is dysfunctional, will not work together, and has no plan. What this river receives in return is failure. Are you aware that the escapement goal for the wild run of summer Chinook salmon on the Salduck River is 1,200 salmon? An escapement goal is the minimum amount of salmon required to sustain a salmon run. That goal is set by the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife fish biologists and is supposed to be the starting point where we can remove salmon from this river without damaging the salmon run. Does it look like this goal is being reached or even followed in this river? What can you do to help? We will put up the email addresses of each member of this team one more time. They are the only ones that can fix this and they need to hear from you. The main purpose of this video is to show this team what is happening to this river. We 
wish to give them the information needed to make good decisions. Please help spread the word and please express your freedom of speech. We would like to present a list of items we feel are necessary and should be implemented on the Salduck River as soon as possible. Item 1. Washington State has a law known as the Forest and Fish Law. This law sets boundaries around a salmon producing stream for protection. It also requires a landowner to remove salmon passage blockages. There are miles of logging roads in the Salduck River Valley. There are hundreds of culverts on those roads and most of them are not salmon friendly. These culverts need replaced and it's not happening fast enough. In order to get out of this requirement, property owners can apply for an extension and the state of Washington gives them out for five years. When that runs out, you can get one for five more years. The salmon in the Salduck River do not have five years to wait and in 10 years they will be gone. We call upon the state of Washington to stop issuing extensions in the Salduck River Valley. We call upon the landowners in the valley to live up to their responsibility don't just enhance a stream, it also enhances the forest. You really need to do this. If you have the land in this valley with a creek or this river flowing through it, please look to see if you can be home for salmon. If you need help with this or you seek funding for improvement, we recommend you contact the Pacific Coast Salmon Coalition in Forks, Washington. That is the local salmon enhancement group for this area. Item 2. We call upon all three management team members to recognize Barking Dog Hole as a critical salmon habitat. Three different species of salmon spend three months of their lifespan in this hole as they make their final transition to the spawning stage. We feel that during this time they need to be protected. We ask once again to stop using Barking Dog Hole to supply brood stock for the Chinook Hatchery Program. We would like to thank these people and or groups for making a positive impact on salmon in the Salduck River Valley in the years 2011 and 2012. First and foremost, a member of our family, James R. Smith. Jim passed away on Labor Day 2011. This is an appropriate date because Jim spent the last 20 years of his life laboring to save these salmon on this river. This Korean War veteran with the Purple Heart and the Bronze Star was responsible for enhancement of Eagle Creek Springs. He fought hard for the Chinook Salmon Run every year and got to see the run of 2011. It would have broken his heart to see the run of 2012. We would like to thank the U.S. Forest Service District Ranger for the Salduck River District and Olympic National Forest. The Forest Service also has a logging road that leads to critical salmon habitat. That road was closed for many years to protect salmon and wildlife, and after some maintenance action, that road was temporarily opened. This district ranger agreed to close this road again, and in 2012, put on the road a load of some of the biggest rocks we have ever seen. The timing of that just before the sockeye salmon returned to the Eagle Creek Springs was perfect. We would like to nominate this district ranger for the Forest Service Employee of the Year. We would like to thank the Pacific Coast Salmon Coalition in Forks, Washington for their continued support of Eagle Creek Springs. In the budget cuts of 2008, the state of Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife turned over 45 projects in this area to the Pacific Coast Salmon Coalition. We were one of those projects. We go to that group when we need support and we thank them very much for being there.